Good morning. I hope you're fine this Tuesday morning. Um, yesterday we had an amazing time, you know, as we were began our devotions for this week. And I trust that you learned something. If you are with us uh, yesterday, if you are not there, you can look for this, uh, the video for yesterday, the devotion for yesterday on YouTube. I think it's also still on the Deliverance Church uh, International Romoja Facebook page. I want to remind you, even as you listen into this devotion, share it with your friends. The Chinese, they say food eaten alone. Is it the Chinese or the, the, the I think some people in Nigeria, some old uh, tribe in Nigeria, says food eaten alone is not sweet. Okay, so share it with your friends and God will bless you as you do so. Today we continue with a conversation. We started a conversation on the Lord's Prayer. We said there are some hidden, you know, nuggets of truth in the Lord's Prayer that are critical. Some amazing stuff inside there. It's like God... Jesus was giving his disciples some coded stuff uh, and you know we need to decode it and so I want us to continue with that conversation a Lord's Prayer and you know we said yesterday there are some five concepts outlined in the Lord's Prayer and you know probably we could start by sharing the Lord's Prayer that is in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 7 8 to 13, 7 to 13, they are about, let's start from verse 8, 8 to 13, and I believe the Lord will bless us and say, so this is what Jesus taught them. He says, therefore, do not be like them. He was talking about the Pharisees and, you know, others, religious folks out there. He says, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask. And he says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, and you could join me in praying that prayer, whispering it. If you're in the Matatu, you can whisper it. If you're driving, you can whisper it. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 8 to 13, New King James Version. See, five concepts you find in that Lord's Prayer. Uh, and I'm going to capture them in five words. Priority, presence, provision, pardon, and power. Priority, presence, provision, pardon, and power. Yesterday we focused on the concept of making God our priority as, you know, articulated uh, in the first two phrases of the prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I hope you set hourly reminders yesterday. I did set mine. I hope you set yours hourly reminders for you to pause and just take a few minutes to appreciate God in our lives, God's place in our lives, and just acknowledge His greatness. You know, that makes Him feel like He is, he is your prioritize his presence in your life. Today I want us to look, um, you know, to focus on the next two phrases after uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And they're in verse 10. And these two phrases are, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the concept of presence. See, God's presence in our lives. We said yesterday that prayer is about a space to intensify our interaction with God. It's not like an ATM machine where you go and punch in the specifics of what you need and then you wait for them to be churned out. No, no, no. We said it's a place for intensifying your interactions with God. Two things are critical in intensifying your interactions with God. First, expressing our need for God's dominating presence in our lives. Expressing our need for God's dominating presence in our lives. Christ makes it clear that the place of prayer should be dominated, should be saturated. Let me say these powerful words like my friend, Reverend Odipo. Uh, dominated, saturated, infiltrated by a desire to have every area of our lives subject to the rule of God. I mean, if, if, if your prayer is just about give me that and give me the other and, you know, get me that and the other, um, God may answer, may not. But uh, that's not the kind of model Jesus was teaching here. Jesus was saying, you know, after we have prioritized God, we have said this is about a relationship with, this is about spending time with God. Then the next thing we should desire is his influence in our lives. Hello? 
is influence, that every area of our lives should be subject to the rule of God. May your kingdom come. A kingdom is a space, a realm um, that uh, a king uh, has influence over. A kingdom is a realm that a king as a dominating influence over. And when you say, may your, when you tell God, may your kingdom come, you're saying, may, may that dominating influence, um, you know, come into my life. May my life become, you know, that place where you, that your dominating influence, uh, you know, you know, spreads and takes charge over. And so when our prayers are filled with invitations for God to take over, and be the dominating influence in every space in our lives, then that's the spirit of the Lord's prayer. You see, it's been put before we talk about our needs because this should be the chief need in our life. If every area of our lives is subject to God's dominating influence, then every area of our lives begins to align with what God wants. That's why immediately after May your kingdom come. He says, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the second thing critical in our interaction with God, because you said prayer is about interacting with God, um, is the desire for God's dominating um, presence. God's dominating presence. And, 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 and the second thing around God's dominating presence is that Not only do we have God's dominating presence, but that that dominating presence should take over every area of our lives. So every area of our lives is now aligned to what God wants. Habakkuk, there's an interesting verse in Habakkuk, 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 Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 14. I don't know if you've ever read it, but listen to it. It says, I don't know, I don't know what Habakkuk had in mind when he was, you know, sharing this and you know declaring this he says for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters cover the sea i think habakkuk under inspiration was expressing god's eternal desire that every aspect of his creation should be filled should be uh, dominated uh, with the glory of god you know in the glory of god the word glory there um, if you interpreted you not know, translated rather Uh, suggests everything that God has and everything that God is. See, when the Lord was teaching his disciples, pray, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Christ was in essence telling them, you need to be at a place where your interactions with God are dominated by a desire for everything that God has and everything that God is to permeate every aspect of your life. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. You know, it goes beyond that to the place where you're not just desiring his will to be done in your life. You're not just desiring your life, every aspect of your life to be aligned to, you know, his presence, to be aligned to his influence. Your will be done. You are desiring that everything around about your life be aligned to his influence. See, when your prayer is about that, when your prayer moments of interactions with God are about that, then that's the kind of prayer that activates God's power, activates God's activity in our lives in an amazing way. When when we are fueled by that, before you even ask God for the food you need, the money you need, you're saying, God, I want your influence to permeate my life, but not just my life, but I want it to be seen in everything around about me. The place where I go to work, my family, the place where I live. I, I, I want your influence. I want your influence to permeate my nation, the city I live in. You see, when... when uh, the children of Israel are going into captivity. Jeremiah 29. Most of you know that uh, chapter. Listen to what God told Jeremiah to tell them. Tell them, you know, when you go to that place, it's a place you don't like. It's a place you... He says, first and foremost, 
before you pray for anything else, pray for the peace of that city. In essence, he was telling them to do exactly what Jesus was telling his disciples. Pray this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, your, uh, hallowed be your name. It says, your, your kingdom come. <laughs> your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When our prayer is about invite, inviting God's influence, inviting God's dominating presence in every area of our lives and around our lives, then we are aligning ourselves to you know, the kind of interaction that God desires. And I believe, we, yesterday we talked a little bit about Enoch. I believe these are some of the things that probably Enoch was expressing and that made God you know, excited about spending time with him. I mean, I don't think Enoch was just telling God every now and then, God, I need salt. God, I need food. God, I need this. I believe they were having conversations at another level, you know, just beyond, you know, the level of needs. They were at another level. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. Now, take note of this. Take note of this. For Jesus to outline in this model prayer that pray this, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. He was saying in essence that these things should inform the atmosphere, the environment, the mood, the tone, the, you know, um, the atmosphere of our interaction with him, a desire to prioritize God and a desire for his presence in our lives. So yesterday, I challenged you to put an hourly reminder for you to take a few minutes and just do what Mary did when Jesus visited Martha and Mary. Just be with him. Just adore him. Just admire him. Just, you know, tell him, Lord, I love you. I, you know, you are important to my life. And, 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 and hopefully that sends a message to God that because I'm spending, I'm taking time out in my schedule to just focus on you that you're important to me. Um, just like many couples, you know, you call them, you send a text, and it sends a message, you're important to me. I believe that even today, I would challenge you to put an hourly reminder. Keep that hourly reminder. But this is what you're going to do in that hourly reminder. Every time your phone reminds you, and, and those of us who are, uh, listened to the devotion yesterday, I challenge people to go to their phones, go to the calendar. You have a, an app called a calendar app and put a reminder every hour uh, to just remind you to spend time with God. Today, this is what you're going to do. When the phone reminds you, uh, probably it will vibrate or give you a tone. When it reminds you, this is what you should do. Take a few minutes and invite God. Invite God. Invite God into what you're doing. Invite God into the conversation you're having. Invite God into the plans you're putting in place. Invite God. Invite God's presence. Invite God's presence. Now let me tell you something about how powerful that invitation is. You see, if you read the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, uh, before the relationship between man and God was affected, the Bible tells us that God came down and visited man and it, the way he talks about it it's almost like he used to do it on a regular basis because in chapter 3 when he comes down and he can't you know find man at a particular place quote unquote he says where are you it's like there was an expectation we need to hook up we need to meet at java at five o'clock every evening and god shows up and it's like man is not there and god quickly calls him come on guy i'm here it's 30 minutes where are you it's like there used to be an interaction between God and man. And you know, it made me think a little bit, uh, you know, why would God take time out to come and just hang out with man? There's something about God interacting with man that is very critical. Because it's not just in the book of Genesis. If you continue reading the Bible, God commands the children of Israel in Exodus 20, Verse 8, I think so. It says, um, you know, I think it's 25 verse 8. Let me, let me just open it. Exodus, God tells the children of Israel something very interesting. He tells them, build me a tabernacle. Build me a tabernacle. 
And then the reason why he asks them to build a tabernacle is very telling. It's very telling. Listen to what it says, Exodus 25 and verse 8. It says, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. I mean, God has got this thing. God has got this need to just be among the creation he created. And lastly, if you go to the book of Revelation, the last chapter, it tells us about how the new Jerusalem will come out of heaven and will come and dwell on the new earth. And then the Bible says, it's like a sigh of relief. Now, the dwelling of God is among men. See, when you take time every day to invite God's presence in your life, you are touching on God's greatest need, and that is to spend time with his creation. You are already bringing heaven down. You don't need to go to heaven. You can bring heaven down. And that's what Enoch did. I believe Enoch was invitational to God's presence. And that's why they would spend a lot of time together. And remember, it didn't end out, in, in, the life of Enoch did not end like the life of the average people around this time. He was taken. He did not die like other men. His life was not, did not end like the life of other mere men. If you are, make it a priority to invite God's presence in your life every other moment, your life will turn out, not like the life of other men around about you, it will turn out amazing, supernatural. Your destiny will be beyond what we can tell. Allow me to pray for us. Lord, thank you for your people that have listened in to this devotion. Ah, oh, I pray that you'll help them to take time every moment to invite you, to be conscious, to be conscious of you, to be conscious of your presence in their lives and to invite you in every space in their lives. And as they do so, I pray that they'll begin to experience you in ways beyond imagination and that their story will be like the story of Enoch a supernatural life, a life that is above the life of the average people around them, a special life, a life of impact, and that as you become real in their lives, their environment will be affected. May your kingdom come. May you will be done on earth, in our lives, as it is in heaven. Amen. God bless you.